Okay, well, it's Father Francis, the faith guy, with the final drive-by homily. Fittingly enough, on the final Sunday uh, of the year, which is the celebration of the Feast of Christ, the Sovereign King. You know, we who live in America probably have within our DNA a real distrust of monarchy because monarchy can so easily lead to uh, despotism, dictatorship, to give one man that kind of authority over an entire nation of people. Uh, has been proven, sad to say over and over again, to be a real uh, risky proposition. And uh, of course our country uh, fought its war of independence over 200 years ago to free themselves from the tyrannical rule of a, an oppressive king uh, <clears throat> who lived uh, you know, thousands of miles away, was distant from his people. So here in America, when we talk about Christ the King, I think that we really don't appreciate what that means. And I remember one time uh, listening to, uh, I guess it was a radio dramatization of The Lord of the Rings. And in the Lord of the Rings, there's uh, well, most of us know the story, whether, whether we've read the uh, the trilogy, Tolkien's books, or um, seen the movie by by Peter Jackson, which uh, did a pretty good job um, of bringing the actual Lord of the Rings story to film on the big screen. Uh, so we're pretty much familiar with the story, but I'll never forget. When um, I was listening to the radio adaptation on NPR radio back in the 1980s, it was right around 1986, and it was like a 12, actually, it was like a 24-week uh, radio uh, installments. So every weekend, Saturday evening, you would hear uh, about an hour broadcast of the Lord of the Rings. <clears throat> and I have to tell you that the old saying I think is very true that radio is the theater of the mind and TV is the theater of the mindless. I saw an interesting uh, sl uh, little uh, slogan for people to read books and it shows this Harry Potter action poster and it says you know, see him as he is in your own imagination. Read the book. You know, oh, okay. Because that's what happens when we read the book or maybe we hear a story read to us. We use our imagination to, to uh, put it, fill in the details. And we, we, we basically, when we, you know, when we read, we, we do that. We, we usually... <laughs> color our heroes with the, with the most brilliant colors, or our villains in the darkest hues. Uh, but, but essentially, we set the scene. Uh, and um, so when I was hearing this story of Lord of the Rings, and I couldn't help but be caught up in the, in the drama. It was true uh, drama. And it was a struggle between good and evil, you know? And at times it looked like evil was going to win. And one of the more dramatic uh, moments in Lord of the Rings is when the king, who is Aragorn, son of Aragorn, he's a reluctant king. He's a, he's a leader and he's a good uh, and noble man. And, but finally, he begins to realize that, yes, he, in fact, is the king. And one of the 
powerful moments in the Lord of the Rings is right after the Battle of uh, Pelennor Fields is one of the characters is, is wounded, mortally wounded. And uh, Aragorn is entrusted to bring him back to life, to restore him to health. <laughs> and they, they find some herbs, and he says, a, a, I guess, a magic or uh, some kind of incantation over this thing. Anyway, but the bottom line is he raises this person from the dead. And <clears throat> as he does that, it becomes apparent to himself and to everyone that he is the rightful king. And there's there's a sense of wow. You know, when you when I remember listening to that, because this was a good king. This was a uh, a just king. This was a, a king who cared deeply about his people. He wasn't, uh, you know, a an absent tea landlord type of a leader or a governor or a monarch, but he was somebody who, in many ways, fought for his own people. And he truly was somebody who was a just and good and noble person. And so when he is a king, when he is crowned king, there is this really great sense of jubilation that takes place uh, within Middle Earth and uh, all the other neighboring uh, lands of Middle Earth. And it's like, it's like this wonderful light of goodness now descends, this great era of hope and, and uh and justice comes forth. And it's not just a hope for justice and, and goodness and rightness, but it's like it's truly reigning. You know, think about that. You know, if, if true justice, goodness, decency, honesty could truly reign, you know, without without any hint of, of uh, uh, phoniness, you know, hypocrisy, corruption, you know, to know that that there was somebody who truly cared for his people and only had their best interest at heart and was going to make good things happen, to make a great society, you know, where there would be, you know, again, justice for all and peace for all and prosperity for all and a little, <laughs> saw this little scampering little mole going across the road. I mean, I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Some people would try to swerve and run over that poor little thing. But again, when I heard that being broadcast on the radio, there was a sense of, there was a real sense of, wouldn't it be wonderful if that could happen to us? Now, I know there are a lot of people who distrust authority in a real strong way, and, and, they, may have, and they have rights to. <laughs> Maybe some people have been truly... Uh, abused by quote-unquote authority figures or the government you know sometimes people you know feel like they've been abused by the church maybe individuals in the church but maybe not the church per se but maybe some people do feel that you know the church has abused them but when I think of Christ the sovereign king I, I think of that kind of feeling when I first you know thought about Aragorn uh, of becoming the king of Middle Earth, and that this was this was the best thing that could happen to uh, people anywhere and everywhere, and that's what I envision. You know, that someday, someday there will be a coronation, and Christ will be made king, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will proclaim him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And someday, we are told that that is going to happen. Now, a lot of people, sad to say, uh, choose not to believe that. But one day, I think we will all be gathered around uh, this great throne, this great uh, kingdom, and we will all see that Christ is who he says he was. And I'm hoping that if you're listening to this little video drive-by homily, 
that you will, um, you know, stop and consider. Maybe read those portions of Scripture that very clearly uh, delineate the fact that Christ is King. Read the stories of Jesus in the Gospels. You know, see the, the times where he rose people from the dead. See where he, you know, fed the 5,000, where he healed, you know, countless people. Where he spoke truth, where he spoke about justice and real peace, you know. Read all those and, 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 and ask yourself, could this not truly be, you know, the Messiah, the King of Kings? Many people believe and many people don't believe. And some people choose not to believe anything. But, again, uh, I think that as we celebrate this great solemnity, this great final feast of the, the triumph of Christ and His cross and His enduring kingship, you know, this is what we actually live for as Christians. And one day, uh, we will experience uh, living in the kingdom under the reign of Christ, the Sovereign King. Well, this has been Father Francis, and I want to first of all thank you for watching the drive-by homilies. And again, this is the last of the drive-by homilies. And I thank you for watching. Again, we still have a few more. Well, actually, we have quite a lot more homilies to go. I'm still on my journey to preach the three-year lectionary cycle. I have about 44 more homilies to go. That's still quite a lot of homilies, I have to admit. And almost another year. So I'm not quite done yet. I kept thinking, boy... Uh, when I get done with that cycle C, I'll be really close to being done. And then it just dawned on me that actually, when I started preaching the lectionary cycle, in cycle A, I started on the 11th Sunday in ordinary time. And so what that means now, as we close out this liturgical year, we begin uh, the, uh, the liturgical year of cycle A, but I have yet to do the four Sundays in Advent, the five Sundays, I believe, in Christmas, uh, the eight Sundays in the first part of ordinary time, the six, seven Sundays in Lent, and I think like the six or seven Sundays in Easter, and then I even have two or three Sundays in Ordinary Time before I get back to my beginning, which was the 11th Sunday uh, in Ordinary Time, Cycle A. So I've still got quite a lot of work ahead of me, so I hope you'll, hopefully you'll keep watching. Again, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. If you have any comments, please do so. I, I do uh, respond to comments. Um, so I want to thank you again for watching. And may you enjoy the peace and the joy <laughs> that Christ the Sovereign King brings to you. And I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching.